Hey guys, Trust is going to be here again, back right into Dragon Age Origins on the road to Inquisition and we are just going to continue for the last video um, which is me just standing in the camp talking to Morrigan and building up a character relationship and getting to know our companion and after that we're going to continue talking to our other companions as well. Uh, so the majority of this video will be conversation so if conversation is not of interest to you, you'd rather see combat or just general storyline uh, then either skip to the end of the video depending where I end it and if I'm still having conversation then then just go straight on to the next video which I promise will be me doing the quests but if you want to see the conversations and stuff this is where to stay so let's go ahead yes I'd like to ask you something so full of questions are you <laughs> tell me are you really Flamel's daughter I assume you are actually asking whether Flemeth herself gave birth to me. Truly? I do not know. I once asked Flemeth that very question and she merely laughed at me. It is not inconceivable that she could capture a chastened man, or perhaps change to a more attractive form to attract him willingly. I find it more difficult to imagine her with child. Can an abomination even reproduce? Who knows for certain? Flemeth is unique in her fashion, providing that the tales of her legend are as she claims. And she claims little. I do know the tales of Flemeth having many daughters, even though I have never met another. And Flemeth has always treated me as her blood. Does that mean you love her? <laughs> what an odd thing to say! Why must love enter into the equation? Flemeth taught me everything I needed to learn. How to survive, the meaning of power, the truth of men. If other mothers do not teach these things, then I believe them the lesser. Is there no place for nurturing and love? Room for coddling and weakness? Why should such things be desirable? Take yourself. You do not honestly desire such things from me, do you? Tis better to be free of such cloying and cluttering delusions as love. <clears throat> Why limit yourself? I do not consider it a limitation. Not leaping into a burning building also happens to be an experience best avoided. I tire of this discussion. Let us move on, shall we? The reason I done that conversation uh, in that way, rather than telling her that I wanted love after, is it lets you get the romance in her um, to be able to seduce her. Uh, but it makes it less, um, so what, committed. Aye, the commitment's a bit less because I'd rather have the experience with Morrigan and get that relationship and then later on uh, get a romance going with Liliana. Um, but Liliana's a much more spread out romance than Morrigan. You can get Roman, ro uh, Morrigan's romance all packed in. Yes? I'd like to ask so, you something. So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> Have you ever been hunted by the Chantra? <laughs> you are very cute to ask so many questions. And you are cute when you're evasive. Really? Perhaps we should be wrapped in ribbons and adorned with flowers. So cute are we, too. <laughs> My mother has been hunted from time to time, yes. By Templar fools like Alistair, which should tell you how successful they generally were. Flemeth made a bit of a game of it, in fact. The Templars would come again, and she would look at me and smile and say that the fun was to begin once more. You've really had no trouble with them? I am unsure. I was too young to understand, and perhaps it was bravado on Flemeth's part, or perhaps she was merely amused. I will never know. Flemeth would warn them once. It was a warning they inevitably failed to heed. 
And then the true game began. Often Flemeth would use me as bait, <laughs> a little girl to scream and run and lure the Templars deeper into the wilds and to their doom. Surely more would have followed. Sometimes. Eventually. Thankfully, the wilds is a vast place. Once they found us, Flemeth would simply move us elsewhere and we would be lost within the forest once again. I did not understand the danger we faced until I was much older. I had never heard of apostates or maleficarum. Do you still think that was fun? I think that my mother made it fun so that a child did not learn to fear. And I think that it was necessary. There are no trials for apostates, no prisons, no mercy. There are only absolutes, so only survival matters. If the wilds have taught me anything, tis this. First, you must survive. Do you disagree? You're probably right. <laughs> An enlightened view, or at least an agreeable one. Enough of this talk. Let us return to the task at hand. Positivity. Yes? I'd like to ask you something. Again. So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> Can you teach others to become shape changers? Possibly, if I had the desire to. I do not. As you wish. Right, here we go. Get into the thick yes. yet. I'd like to discuss something personal. We are in camp, so tis as good a time as any. <laughs> One. Kiss her. What's this? <laughs> tis a rather odd discussion you seem to desire, leaning in so closely. Do you object? Not unless you stop. Pop, pop. Yes? I'd like to discuss something personal. We are in camp, so tis as good a time as any. We need to discuss us. Discuss away. Nah, nothing. Forget I brought it up. Right. Is there anything else we can say, or do we just give our gifts now? To try and keep this going higher? Yes. I'd like to ask you something. So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> Aye, we just have to give our gifts now. Or make a like for the things, but I think we've got gifts we can give her. Let's see. We need to get down and dirty. Grey Warden Hand Puppet. Oh, she needs an Alistair doll. She'll love. Honestly. So it's basically a uh, voodoo doll with Alistair. <laughs> She'll love that. I am grateful. It is thoughtful indeed. Did you see that? Oh my god! That's plus 54. That's put our relationship up full. Plus 54. I knew she would like that, but I didn't think she'd like it that much. Jeez, oh. That's perfect. Wow. She won that stuff now. Look at that. New abilities, inspiration, just gone right up. What are we going, man? Cheesered. Massive magic. That's how we do it. Right, talk to her now. It is cold in my tent, all alone. <laughs> Get a fuck up blanket. <laughs> well, we can't have that. So you shall come to my tent? But whatever shall we do in that tiny little space together while we wait for it to warm? I'm sure I'll think of something. Good. Then let us waste no more time with foolish talk.
as <laughs> ice. Yeah. And that is successful. That has been done. I see the stories they tell of Grey Warden endurance are not exaggerated. Oh, there are stories. <laughs> Indeed there are. The unanswered question, of course, is whether the endurance exists because of the taint within you, or because the Grey Wardens are by nature so very... healthy. I enjoy the thought that tis a little of both. Natural prowess driven by a darker side. Was that a one-time thing? That is entirely up to you. Simply know that I have no designs on your independence. I wish only to do what I desire, and if that coincides with what you desire, then so be it. And should you decide not to continue our misadventure, then so be it. Very simple, is it not? I can love a fart. Then we should get along marvelously. <laughs> Come then, let us be off before the others begin to stare. And there you go guys, that's how you successfully seduce Morrigan into a romance. Keep her romanced, but no be committed. That's how you do it. That's how it is done. I have something for you. That sounds a little vague. Nah, what do you mean? I mean that I have a gift for you. Tis a ring. Now before you get any foolish <laughs> notions, let me explain. Uh, explain. Flemeth once gave me the ring because it allowed her to find me no matter where I went, in case I was ever captured by hunters. I disabled its power as soon as we left the wilds. Recently, however, I thought to change it. Now, I will be able to find whoever wears it instead. It's a sweet gift, thank you. It's not given out of sentimentality. I believe you were too important to risk. If you were captured, this ring would allow the rest of us to find you quickly. I'm glad to see you, Kill. Now you are mocking me. Do you wish the ring or not? I am tempted to simply keep it. Thank you for the gift. You are welcome. Perhaps it will be useful someday. I see, I wonder if it's got any power. I don't, she's never gave me that gift before. I've never had that before, but I've never let the relationship. I've never had her relationship at full, because I've always broke up with her. Hello. Right. Let's see it. Right, so it's in that, isn't it? Morrigan's ring. Gives you welfare as well. Eh, we'll put it on. There we go. She can find it. We'll keep this one on in as well. Um. Right, let's talk to her again. <laughs> hey, Bar. I'd like to discuss something personal. We're in camp, so tis as good a time as any. So it says, get a joint minimum of ten. Well, I saw she wants to go to ten. Hmm. Perhaps. Shall I consult my capricious nature and divine an answer for you? Get in a tent, woman. Why? Yes, sir. I always follow orders. <laughs> Swiftly and to the letter. <laughs> that's funny when she says it like that. Ah, so that's the best way to get her relationship done to have a positive one well. Because the best thing is is I've got that romantic involvement where she cares about you and you get to know her deeply. But there's no commitment, like she'll no bother as much when you start with Liliana as what she would if you told her you loved her. Right, what's our time stamp on this video? 40 minutes. Right, cool. Here we go. Right, we'll talk to... I think we've done most of the talking to Alistair, haven't we? We'll see anyway. What do you need? Do you want to talk about Duncan? You don't have to do that. I know you didn't know him as long as I did. He was like a father to you, I understand. I... I should have handled it better. Duncan warned me right from the beginning that this could happen. Any of us could die in battle. I shouldn't have lost it, not when so much is riding on us, not with the blight and... and that 
and everything. I'm sorry. It makes my guy look really short. <laughs> look how much I'm needing to look up to him. It makes him look about seven foot tall. There's no need to apologize. I'd like to have a proper funeral for him. Maybe once this is all done, if we're still alive. I don't think he had any family to speak of. Yeah, Drew. It probably sounds stupid, but part of me wishes I was with him in the battle. I feel like I abandoned him. No, I understand completely. Of course. I'd be dead then, wouldn't I? It's not like that would make him happier. I think he came from High Ever, or so he said. Maybe I'll go up there sometime. See about putting up something in his honor. I don't know. Have you had someone close to you die? Not that I mean to pry, I'm just. My entire family was murdered just recently. Oh, oh, of course. How stupid of me to forget. Here I am going on and on about Duncan, and you. I am so sorry. Thank you. Really, I mean it. It was good to talk about it, at least a little. Maybe I'll go to high over with you when you go. I'd like that. So would he, I think. Alistair's a G man. He's funny and he's just he's cool as cool guy. What do you need? I'd like to ask you something. Ask I think away. I saw the conversation's really done well. Just a bit. Aye, just a bit aye. What can a Templar do exactly? Well, essentially, they're trained to fight. Chantry would tell you that the Templars exist simply to defend. But don't let them fool you. They're an army. The other main purpose for a Templar is, of course, to hunt mages. To that end, we train in talents that drain mana and disrupt spells. So can the Arnolds learn these talents? Perhaps. But there usually isn't much of an opportunity. The Chantry keeps a close rein on its Templars. We are given lyrium to help develop our magical talents, you see. Which means we become addicted. And since the Chantry controls the lyrium trade with the dwarves, well, I'm sure you can put two and two together. That's horrible, I can't believe we do that. Well, they do it, and they feel perfectly justified. You don't need Lyrium in order to learn the Templar talents. Lyrium just makes Templar's talents more effective. Or so I was told. Maybe it doesn't even do that. The Chantry usually doesn't let their Templars get away either, so they can spread their secrets. I'm a bit of an exception. Lucky me. <laughs> what do you need? I'd like to ask you something. Ask away. Can you teach Charles to be a Templar? I suppose I could. But I really would rather not. When the Grand Cleric let Duncan recruit me, she made me swear never to reveal Templar secrets outside of the Chantry. I'd rather not go back on my word. Very well. Respect your word. Ask me later, perhaps. Maybe I'll change my mind. This is not something small you're asking, after all. Do, 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 do. What do you need? I'd like to ask you something again. Ask away. So how did you become a Grey Warden? Same way you did. You drink some blood, you choke on it and pass out. You haven't forgotten already, have you? Ah, very funny. I do my best. <laughs> what can I say? Let's see, I was in the Chantry before. I trained for many years to become a Templar, in fact. That's where I learned most of my skills. You don't seem like a religious sort. You're telling me I was banished to the kitchens to scour the pots more times than I can count. And that's a lot. I, I can count pretty high. <laughs> the Grand Cleric didn't want to let me go. Duncan was forced to conscript me, actually, and was she ever furious when he did? I thought she was going to have us both arrested. I was lucky. You think this is better than being a Templar? Oh, I suppose the Chantry life is good enough for some. Here, we have the chance to fight against the Blight. 
to actually do some good instead of sitting in a temple somewhere. I'll always be thankful to Duncan for recruiting me. If it hadn't been for him, I would never... I wouldn't have. He was a good man. He was. A good man who didn't deserve his fate. That much I'm sure of. Come on, let's go. I think I'm done talking. Okay, no, bit by bit. What do you need? I'd like to ask you something. Ask away. So you said our women raised you? Oh, did I say that? I meant that dogs raised me. Giant slobbering dogs from the Anderfells. A whole pack of them, in fact. <clears throat> really? That must have been tough for them. Well, they were flying dogs, you see. Surprisingly strict parents, too. And devout Andrastians to boot. <laughs> And these dogs sold you at the Chantry, I take it? Oh, there you go, listening to me again. You'd think you'd have gotten past that already. I ended up in the Chantry, sure, but I didn't start there. Let's see, how do I explain this? I'm a bastard, and before you make any smart comments, I mean the fatherless kind. My mother was a serving girl in Redcliffe Castle, who died when I was very young. Arleman wasn't my father, but he took me in anyhow, and put a roof over my head. He was good to me, and he didn't have to be. I respect the man, and I don't blame him anymore for sending me off to the Chantry once I was old enough. But you blamed him then, I take it. I was young and resentful and not very pious. Of course I blamed him. I remember screaming at him like a little child. Well, I was a child, so I doubt it was surprise. Arleman eventually married a young woman from Orlais which caused all sorts of problems between him and the king because it was so soon after the war. But he loved her. Anyhow, then you, Arlesa, resented the rumors which pegged me as his bastard. They weren't true, but of course they existed. The Isle didn't care, but she did. So off I was packed to the nearest monastery at age 10. Just as well. The Arlesa made sure the castle wasn't a home to me by that point. She despised me. You were probably luckier than most orphans. I suppose you're right. I wasn't raised as the Isle's son, though, if you're picturing that. I slept in hay, out in the stables, not on silk sheets. I remember I had an amulet, with Andraste's holy symbol on it. The only thing I had of my mother's. I was so furious at being sent away, I tore it off and threw it at the wall and it shattered. Stupid, stupid thing to do. The Isle came by the monastery a few times to see how I was, but I was stubborn. I hated him there, and blamed him for everything. And eventually, he just stopped coming. You were young? And raised by dogs. Or I may as well have been, the way I acted. <laughs> yeah, but maybe all young bastards act like that, I don't know. All I know is that the Isle is a good man and well-loved by the people. He also was King Kayla's uncle, so he has a personal motivation to see Loghain pay for what he did. Anyway, that's really all there is to the story. Mm. What do you need? I'd like to ask you something. Ask away. Why have you remained a Templar if you hit the Chantry? Have you seen the uniform? It's not only stylish, but well made. I'm a sucker for good tailoring. I thought Templars were heavy plate mostly. That's just in public. In private, we have these yellow and purple tunics, right? Much more comfortable. And you don't break the beds when you jump on them during a pillow fight. You had lots of these pillow fights? Uh, pillow fights? I mean, no, of course not. I meant sword fights. <laughs> With rusty swords, dripping with acid, the kind that puts hair on your chest. <laughs> you don't really want to know about my being a Templar, do you? It's really quite boring. Poke, poke, poke. I'd really want to know, yes. Poke, poke, poke. Tell me everything about your life, Alistair. All right, if you insist. It's not like we have anything better to do, right? The truth of the matter is that I did hate going to the monastery. 
The initiates from poor families thought I put on airs, while the noble ones called me a bastard and ignored me. I felt like Al Eamon had cast me off unwanted, and I was determined to be bitter. But I took some solace in the training itself, I guess. I was actually quite good at it. What did you enjoy about the training? The education, mostly. But also the discipline. You need to have a disciplined mind in order to use the abilities we have. It was difficult, but rewarding. I never really felt at home anywhere, though, until I joined the Grey Wardens. And Duncan felt my Templar abilities might be useful for when we encountered Darkspawn magic, so I kept it up. What about you? Do you have anywhere you consider <coughs> home? My home is taken over by Arrowhow. Right. Stupid of me to ask. I'm sorry. We won't always be traveling like this, you know. Once the war is over, once the blight is... Well, a time will come when we'll have to think about having a real home again. Though that seems like a far ways off. And I suppose the Grey Wardens are gone for good. Either way. They can be about. I suppose you're right. We can create new Grey Wardens, but we'll never get back those we lost. I wonder if it would ever feel the same. Anyhow, now I've sidetracked us. We'd better get back to what we're supposed to be doing right now. La 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 la. Right. I don't know if I've got really anything else to say. I'm what do you need? Ask away. Nah. But we can give him a gift and that'll kick up that relationship some. Actually heavy. I'm never happy that we get the powerful gifts on the PC Ultimate Edition. The Kings of Ferelden. Ah, yeah, let's go for it. We'll give him that see what he does. Great. Super. Thanks. Oh, shit. I don't know what very well did it. Holy fuck. Oh, thank you. That's very nice. I could get used to this, right. you know. There we go. I'll do. Oh, thank you. That's very nice. You got it. Is that for me? Really? Wow. I'm... Wow. Yeah. I'll start to take that. Oh, it's not a gift. Oh, yeah, I thought it was a gift. I can't believe I gave him that fucking bad gift. Done minus Something 50. on your mind? I have some questions. Of course. What changes about you after joining? You mean other than becoming a Grey Warden? You've been a Grey Warden longer than I have. Hmm. You know, I asked Duncan this too, and all I got was, you'll see. He wouldn't tell you? Oh, it's not that Duncan wants to keep it a secret. It's just that the Grey Wardens don't discuss it much. I gather it's not a pleasant topic. The first change I noticed was an increase in appetite. I used to get up in the middle of the night and raid the castle larder. I thought I was starving. I'd slurp down every dinner like it was my last. <laughs> my face all covered in gravy. When I'd look up, the other Grey Wardens would stare, then laugh themselves to tears. So it was a joke? More like an initiation. They all went through it too. Oh, and then there were the nightmares. Duncan said it was part of how we sense the dark spawn. We tap into their, well, I don't know what you call it, their group mind. And when we sleep, it's even worse. You learn to block it out after a while, but at first it's hard. It's supposed to be worse for those who join during a blight. How is it for you? Nightmares, yes, I know what you mean. Some people never have much trouble, but that's rare. Others have trouble sleeping their entire life. They're just more sensitive, I suppose. Everyone ends up the same, though. Once you reach a certain age, the real nightmares come. That's how a Grey Warden knows his time has come. 
This time has come. Oh, that's right. We never had time to tell you that part, did we? Well, in addition to all the other wonderful things about being a Grey Warden, you don't need to worry about dying from old age. You've got 30 years to live. Give or take. The taint. It's a death sentence. Ultimately, your body won't be able to take it. When the time comes, most Grey Wardens go to Orzammar and die in battle rather than waiting. It's tradition. How cheery. And you wondered why we kept the joining a secret from the new recruits. There you have it. I've never wondered that, understand. You know, Duncan... He started having the nightmares again. He told me that in private. He said it wouldn't be long before he'd go to Orzammar himself. I guess he got what he wanted. I just wish it had been something worthy of him. You'll be remembered, as well the others. I know. Ending the blight should make this all worthwhile, right? <clears throat> Something on your mind? I have some questions. Of course. If you were raised in the Chantry, have you never... Never... never what? Had a good pair of shoes? Sex. Oh, so that's what we're talking about. <laughs> well, if you really want to know, you tell me first. Many, many times. And apparently <laughs> you have no shame as well. <laughs> well, all right, I'll play along. I myself never had the pleasure. Not that I haven't thought about it, of course. But, you know. You've never had the opportunity. Well, living in the Chantry is it's not exactly a life for rambunctious boys. They they raised me to be a gentleman. That's not so bad, is it? You tell me. I've uh, no urge to rush into anything. We, we may not even survive what is to come, after all. Enough. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Let's go. <laughs> Something on your mind? Of course. What was it like to be a grey warden with others? I didn't know them for very long. But I guess it was longer than you. You never met them all, did you? They were quite a group. Actually, they felt like an extended family, since we were all cut off from our former lives. We also laughed more than you'd think. There was this one time... Well, you probably don't want to hear stories about men you didn't know. No, I'd like to hear about them. There was one Grey Warden who came all the way from the Anderfells. What's his name? Gregor. Gregor. He was a burly man with the biggest, fuzziest beard you've ever seen. And the man could drink. He drank all the time, but he never got drunk. Finally, we all made a pool to see just how many pints it would take to put him under the table. Sounds like you had a lot of fun. Sometimes. We were kin of a sort. All of us had gone through the joining, so we knew... Well, anyhow, it doesn't have to be deadly serious all the time. Anyhow, we never did find out. He said he'd drink a pint for every half pint that the rest of us drank. He was still going by the time the rest of us were passed out. I'm told that Duncan walked in later on and saw us all passed out from one end of the hall to the other, and Gregor still drinking. <laughs> Duncan laughed until he nearly... until... Sorry, this must be hard for you. Yes, I... I suppose so. I thought I was done with this, but... It just struck me that I have nothing to remember Duncan by. Nothing at all. There's no body, not even a token of his that I can take with me. That must sound really stupid to you. Not at all. I just would have liked something of his to take with him, that's all. Well, there's no use in moaning about it, is there? He's gone. <coughs> Let's just go. He gets past this morbid stage, so he does. Right, what's our time scale now? 34 minutes. 
Oh man, there's a lot of talking in this, I didn't realise how long it really was. I always get pure absorbed in it. But it wasn't for this type like action. I'm block. wondering something. I'd like to know your thoughts about some of our travelling companions. Do you mind if I ask? Time for the just a gossip, I take it. I've got this nefarious plan to go around to each of them and secretly tell them all the nasty things you said. That way they'll mutiny and I shall become the group leader. <laughs> Very cute. So you know I'm laughing at you know if you Out, now I'm wounded. Look at me, bleeding all over the place. You're just not very nice, are you? Seriously though, I'm only curious. I've had enough time to form my own opinions, and I just want to see if yours are any different. <sighs> Sounds like fun, ask away. What about Sten? The way he looks at me with those eyes. Creepy. And he's so quiet for someone so big. He's dedicated, I'll give him that. Yet he doesn't seem quite so bad as the Chantry tells us. According to them, his philosophy is vile and evil. Yet he seems so reasonable. And yet, he killed all those people. He doesn't even deny it. Doesn't that bother you? He seems to regret what he did. I'm not so sure that his regret means the same as it would for us. The Kunari sense of honor is... It's a bit hard to grasp. For me, anyway. What about Liliana? Is she crazy? Or do you really believe in her vision? I believe that she believes in our vision. That's one way to put it. I don't know what to make of her. If you look at her when she doesn't see you, she just looks so, so sad. I almost feel guilty taking her away from her life. It was her choice. Yes, I know. Still, I feel badly for her. Morrigan, do you trust her? Think about it. Maybe Flemeth sent her with us for some other reason than she said. You really don't like each other, do you? Well, aside from the fact that she's a complete and utter bitch, no, I don't like her at all. Why, do you? Mm. I think she's beautiful, don't you? Sure. Beautiful, just like... like something that's also dangerous, like a... beautiful... dangerous thing. Admit it, you want her. Oh, I give up. <laughs> Do what you want. Just tell me one thing. Is it true what the others say? Do you have a... a thing going with Morrigan? Tell me it's not true. What the others say? You think we have better things to do all day than talk about you? Come on. Tell me it's not true. <laughs> Why, are you jealous? Oh, someone's a little touchy, eh? Attacking my manhood and everything. That must mean it's true. Well, fine. It's your funeral. Enough. I think my curiosity is sated. Let's get back to it, shall we? I think that's most of the conversations, don't we, Alistair? Something on your mind? Some questions. Of course. Uh, ah, that's it. So it is it's everything. The rest of it all comes for you in the story. This is going to be a really long video, by the way, I think. Because I want to get, at least get some conversation with Liliana done. Uh, aye, so, here we go. Yes? I'd like to talk. Well, here I am. The vision of yours? I knew this would come up sooner or later. I don't know how to explain, but I had a dream. In it, there was an impenetrable darkness. It was so dense, so real. And there was a noise, a terrible, ungodly noise. I stood on a peak and watched as the darkness consumed everything. 
And when the storm swallowed the last of the sun's light, I... I fell. And the darkness drew me in. You dreamed of the blight? I suppose I did. That was what the darkness was, no? When I woke, I went to the Chantry's gardens, as I always do. But that day, the rose bush in the corner had flowered. Everyone knew that bush was dead. It was grey and twisted and gnarled, the ugliest thing you ever saw. But there it was, a single beautiful rose. It was as though the maker stretched out his hand to say, even in the midst of this darkness, there is hope and beauty. Have faith. Nice major want to help me. In my dream I fell, or, or maybe I jumped. I'd do anything to stop the blight. I know that we can do it. There are so many good things in the Maker's world. How can I sit by while the blight devours everything? I suppose I couldn't sit by either. That is why you're a Grey Warden. Come, there's a blight to stop. Yes? I'd like to talk. Well, here I am. What would someone like you be doing in Lovren's Chantry? What is meant by someone like me? You know, a beautiful, charming woman like yourself. And there were no beautiful, charming women in the cloisters, you think? <laughs> you would be wrong. There were many lovely young initiates in the Lothering Cloister. All of them chaste and virtuous. <laughs> it added to their mystique. Because then, they were forbidden. And forbidden fruit is the sweeter, no? Those initiates can't have been more lovely than you. Flatterer. I, however, did not take vows, and so perhaps I am not as enigmatic. The Chantry provides succor and safe harbor to all who seek it. I chose to stay and become affirmed. <coughs> Affirmed. We affirm our belief in the Maker, in Andraste and the Chant, but other than that, there are no vows taken. So your skills were learned before your time in the Chantry? I was a travelling minstrel in Orlais. Tales and songs were my life. I performed, and they rewarded me with applause and coin. And my skill in battle? Well, you pick up different skills when you travel, yes? Yes, of course. Um, let's move on. Yes? Something you need? I'd like to talk about something. Yes? What's on your mind? Why did you decide to come to Ferelden? My mother was from Denerim, and I consider myself a Ferelden. Mother served an Orlesian noblewoman who lived here when Orlé ruled. When Orlé was defeated and the common folk began to resent the presence of any Orlesian, the lady returned to Orlé. She took my mother with her. I was born in Orlay and did not set foot in Ferelden till much later. Mother was always telling me stories of her homeland. I think she missed it. What happened to your mother? Mother died when I was very young. Lady Cecily let me stay with her. I had no one else. She was quite old then, and she had me study music and dance to entertain her. It is unfair that I have more memories of Cecily than my mother. You were young, it's understandable. Strangely, the only thing I really remember of Mother was her scent. She kept dried flowers in her closet amongst her clothes. Small white Ferelden wildflowers with a sweet fragrance. Mother called them Andraste's Grace. They were very rare in Orlais. But enough about that. Let us move on. Oh, that's just definitely got to be one of the longest videos. Yes. In fact, this will be Something the longest video, I think, uh, out of this playthrough. Just because I'm trying to get all this side conversation yes. out of the way. What's on your mind? To get the relationships up, because the relationships make your characters more efficient as well. Do you miss anything about Oli? I miss Val Royale. Unlike other cities where the people are the lifeblood and the character, Val Royale was her own person, and her people little more than decorations. There was always music in Val Royale streaming from the many windows, quiet refrains and triumphant choruses. 
and always floating above that all, the chant, coming from the Grand Cathedral. It was magnificent. It sounds wonderful. Oh, it would take me a day or two to talk about the many splendors of Orlais, her golden fields, her lush meadows. Of course, there are good things and bad things about Orlais, like anywhere else. Sometimes I miss it dearly, and sometimes I'm glad I'm rid of it. And you will laugh at this, but I miss the fine things I had in Orlais. What sorts of things? Dresses, fine dresses and furs. In shoes, of course. One can't mingle with nobility with bad shoes, you see. Orlais is very fashionable. Almost ridiculously so. <gasps> the shoes! Living with those ridiculous trends was worth it for the shoes. What's so special? You can get nice shoes in there. Perhaps. Ferald and Folk are so much more practical. I don't see them making use of something simply for its looks. When I left Orlais, the fashion was shoes with delicate tapered heels and embellishments in the front. A ribbon, perhaps, or embroidery. In soft colors, of course. It was spring. Must have cost a lot of gold. Yes, well, a fair amount. It is so frivolous and wasteful, I know. But I have such a weakness for lovely shoes. Oh, I could talk about shoes all day. But we have things to do, don't we? I'm not going to kid on my wee guy who loves shoes, man. Yes? Something you need? Yes? What's on your mind? I heard that no lame and shows are often spies. Where did you hear this? <clears throat> Someone told me long ago. And you believe everything you hear? <laughs> not all minstrels are spies. Most are just singers and storytellers, but some of them are are what we call bards. What's the difference? Many use the two words minstrel and bard interchangeably, but to do so in Orlais would cause misunderstanding. Bards are minstrels and more, spies as you say. Some say there is a bard order, but I don't think this is true. Many bards work alone or in small groups, doing the bidding of a patron who pays for their services. If there is an organization behind it all, no one knows who they are. What sort of patron? Nobles, mostly. In Orlais, there is much rivalry amongst the highborn. They fight over land, influence and the favor of the empress. But they cannot do this openly because it is impolite, and in public, they wear smiling faces and pretend to be civil. In secret, they plot and scheme to destroy each other. It is a game completely meaningless to anyone but its players. You were a bard, weren't you? I have revealed too much, it seems. But it doesn't matter what I used to be. It is the past. I'd never leave that. It sounds too exciting. The excitement of the life wears off very quickly, I'm afraid. I found myself in Ferelden and sheltered from bad weather in the Chantry. And when the storm passed, I just did not want to leave. I like to see the Maker brought me here. Yes? Something you need? Can you teach me to be a bard? Mm. That's an idea. I watch you, and I do think you'd find some of my skills quite easy to pick up. Let's just go over there, away from the others, for safety, yes? I expect there shall be daggers flying about willy-nilly for a time. Yes? Something you need? I'd like to talk about something. Yes? What's on your mind? That'll do. I can't be asked listening to her stories and I'll listen to them later. See if there's any gifts we can give her. Where's my time? Must be cutting... Aye, nearly an hour. Okay, we'll just go have an hour long video then. It's gotta be the length of three videos. Right, what can we get? That's good. 
nothing, absolutely nothing. Oh well, I guess that's us for Liliana right now. I suppose I, sh I think I'll just listen to our stories then. Ah! Yes? Okay. Something you need? Yes? What's on your mind? Of course I do. I love stories far too much to keep them to myself. Everyone should be able to benefit from them, I think. Do you know any Ferelden legends? I know one. Told to me by my mother a long time ago. It always chilled me to the bone. Maybe you have heard of Flemeth? I met a Flemeth in the Kirkcaldy Wilds. Ah, uh, are you sure? Was she THE Flemeth of legend? Flemeth, the devourer of men. Flemeth, mother of witches. Flemeth, demon touched, who dwells in the mists. She didn't introduce herself as such. Ferelden mothers scare their daughters with talk of Flemeth. They say that if you're bad, Flemeth will spirit you away and bind you to her forever. They also say that Flemeth mourns her lost beauty and will steal yours through your looking glass if she catches you. Flemeth was once beautiful. Flemeth's beauty was known throughout the land. She had hair like unto a moonless night, skin as pale as winter's first snow, and eyes as beautiful and perilous as the sea. When she came of age, she came to the attention of the Lord of High Ever, Conobar, and he took her for his wife. Conobar soon learned that his young bride had the gift of magic. He kept this a secret, for he feared that she would be taken from him. Flemeth stayed with Conobar for some years, and with his blessing, she practiced her art. And then one day, a young poet named Osen came to the castle. Flemeth was captivated by Osen's voice, and he by her beauty, and they fell in love. Oh, the plot thickens. Flemeth longed to be with her true love, and she and Osen fled from Conobar's lands, seeking refuge in the Kokari wilds with the Chasin tribes. They lived there happily for many a year, till the day Flemeth received news that Conobar was dying and longed to see her face one last time. Flemeth's heart swelled with pity for the man who once was her husband and begged Osen to return to Conobar's side with her. But when Flemeth and Osen entered High Ever, they were captured by Conobar's men and Osen was slain in front of Flemeth's eyes. Flemeth was imprisoned in the highest tower of the castle, there to await Conobar's judgment on her. Distraught at the loss of her love, Flemeth plotted revenge against her husband. She summoned a fey demon, intending for it to wreak vengeance on Conobar, but a spell went awry. The demon possessed Flemeth. Turning her into an abomination, the halls of the castle run red with blood as Flemeth slaughtered Conobar and all his men. The last of Flemeth's humanity melted away, and at dawn, she stole back to the wilds to plot and scheme for a hundred years. They say she took to her side many chastened men, and with their help, begat her daughter witches, who even now prowl the dark places of the Kokari Wilds. <coughs> Tell me about Darkspawn. Chantry Law says it is man's pride that created the Darkspawn. In ages past, the mages of the Tevinder Imperium ruled much of the world we know. In their pride, they thought their magics invincible and imagined that they were greater than the Maker himself. So thinking, they invaded his golden city, planning to take it for themselves and depose their own creator. But they were impure and full of sin, and it is with the sin that they tainted the golden city, corrupting it forever. The Maker cursed them and cast them from his sight. Wherever they went, they spread the taint of their sin. Any land that was touched by the taint became blighted and would suffer no life. Instead, the darkspawn arose to torment us and remind us of our hubris. Know any stories from Ole? Of course, Olesians enjoy telling stories. I shall tell you my favorite tale of Aveline, the Knight of Ole. 
That sounds interesting. A long time ago, a girl child was born to a farmer. He had hoped for a son, not a daughter, and so he told his wife to abandon the child in the woods. Before the cold could claim her, the baby was found by a tribe of Dalish elves who took pity on the poor mewling thing and raised her as their own. Aveline, for that is what they called her, grew strong and quick and clever under the guidance of the elves. She learned to wield a sword as well as any man, could kill a deer with an arrow at hundred paces, and was as graceful on the back of a horse as she was on foot. Continue, please. Aveline's Dalish guardians saw that she could easily best any Olesian chevalier in battle, and wanted to show the cruel humans the child they had left to die. They bestowed upon her a fine horse and armor, and sent her to prove herself to her people in the Grand Tourney. Now in those days, no woman was allowed to take up arms, let alone compete in the Grand Tourney, but Aveline kept her helmet on and was not discovered. Go on. Aveline won many events and gained the approval of the adoring crowd. Eventually, she came face to face with the knight Kaleva in the Grand Melee. Aveline had already bested him in the joust, and Kaleva was determined not to lose a second time. Out of desperation to regain his honor, Kaleva tripped Aveline and tossed her to the ground, ripping off her helmet as he did so. Silence fell upon the arena as Aveline was revealed. Kaleva declared the previous competitions invalid. A woman had taken part, and this was not allowed. But the crowd cheered for Aveline. Kaleva was furious, for he had lost to a woman and was now being shamed. Blinded by his rage, he forced Aveline to her knees. Know your place, woman, cried he, and slit her throat. That's terrible. The son of the king, Prince Freyan, was present. He recognized Aveline's skill and bravery and began to see the injustice done to the women in his land. When he was made king, he rewrote the laws of Ole so that women could also become chevalier. He honored Aveline and knighted her after her death. And to this day, any female who is knighted reveres Aveline the Brave, for she is the patron of all women chevalier. <clears throat> that was another story I wanted to hear. Which one? Do you know anything about the Dalish? I have heard a little about how the elves gained their freedom from the Tevinter Imperium. When Andraste began her exalted march against the Imperium, the elves joined her cause to fight their masters. The great elven leader, Shatan, born in captivity, rose up to lead his people. He foresaw a future where the elves were free. Shatan was killed when Andraste was betrayed, but the elves continued to fight, eventually breaking free of the Imperium. The elves claimed the dales in the south and settled there in the land of their own. It didn't last. The elves lived in the dales for centuries. They resurrected the worship of the elven gods and would allow the building of no chantry. This angered the chantry and the hostility between the two factions finally broke out in open war. The Chantry says the Elves struck first, but I do not know whether to believe it. The Chantry declared a wholly exalted march against the Elves, named for Andraste's similar march against the Winter. During the exalted march of the Dales, the Elven cities were sacked and the Elven state completely dissolved. Some of the Elves bitterly accepted their fates and surrendered to human rule living in the human cities as second-class citizens. But others, still fiercely proud of their heritage, refused to bow to the humans, and instead became homeless wanderers. There were the Elves of the Dales, the Dalish. What do you know about Andraste? Andraste was the Maker's chosen. The Maker had long since abandoned the world when the sound of her singing turned his ear. Beauty, grace and wisdom enraptured him, and he offered to take her from this flawed world to become his divine bride. But Andraste had an earthly husband and would not forsake him. Instead, she beseeched the Maker to return to his people once more. So earnest was her plea 
that the Maker was moved, and promised that he would create a paradise on Earth if all abandoned their false gods and turned once more to him. And this is why Andraste began her exalted march on the idolaters of the Tevinter Imperium. The Maker granted her his powers with which to smite her enemies. Andraste brought the Imperium to its knees, and her victories converted many to the worship of the Maker. How did Andraste die? Alas, it was the frailties of men that betrayed and killed Andraste. Her earthly husband, Mafarath, a chieftain of the Alamari tribes himself, grew jealous as his wife's popularity and influence overshadowed his own. She was also revered as the Maker's betrothed, and Mafarath began to see their own bond waning in significance as Andraste became ever more devoted to the Maker. Out of envy and spite, Mafarath made a pact with the Archon Hesarian of Tevinta, allowing his beloved Andraste to be ambushed and captured. Andraste was burned at the stake in Minrathus, the capital of Tevinta. Why did the Maka not save Obi's power? I have thought on this too. Did he withdraw his sight from her at that moment? Where were all the powers he bestowed upon her? This question has come to me many times, and I have no answer. Perhaps there was no way for Andraste to return to the Maker but through her death. We will never know for sure. Let's just move on. I think that's about all the conversation we can have with her. Yes. So far. Something you need? I'd like to talk yes. to you about something. What's on your mind? Yeah, that's it. <coughs> Hey guys, this video was like getting really, really ridiculously long. I was just trying to cram in all the conversation into one video so I could get on with the quest. Um, we've got three characters. The only character we've not really spoke to yet is Sten. Um, I'll just leave that for another time, the second time we go to a party camp. Uh, I'll get back on to doing some questing again, because this is really too long now. Um, Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed that really long video if you stick around and watch to get to know the characters. Um, that's our relationship's quite high anyway, so if you enjoyed the video leave a like, comment and subscribe, that'll really help me out. And I hope you join me for the next video, and I'm Jurassic Scooper and I'll talk to you later on. Bye bye.